is what we're going to be talking about here today on The Daily Race. Man, glad to have you here on this Friday morning. We are, we're not run, running a marathon this morning. We're not sprinting. We're just taking one step forward in our relationship with God. Now, one step forward in our study here in Romans. Uh, we're going to be reading just a few verses here today in Romans chapter 8. We're going to spend a couple days here. Um, Paul has been uh, laying out the foundation of the gospel. He's been talking about sin a lot and our, our nature and being slaves to Christ versus slaves to sin and having this moment of just confessing, why do I keep doing the things that I hate? Uh, even though we have accepted God's forgiveness, even though we've been forgiven, we still struggle with temptation. Uh, so what hope do we have of of defeating this battle? Well, what hope do we have of this getting better? Today is the answer. Uh, today we're going to read in Romans chapter 8. It has everything to do with the Holy Spirit. Uh, let me start here in, in verse 1. It says this, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. So it's, it's pointing to the ultimate reality of the gospel, that we're not, because of Jesus Christ, we're not condemned because of the sin that we've we've done in our lives. Um, that God's not holding it against that we've been justified. Uh, we've been redeemed, purchased back. So we've been forgiven. There's no condemnation. But that doesn't mean that sin doesn't still exist in our lives. Uh, we're not robots. Uh, we're, we still are tempted. And he said, so he continues and says this, and, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving us his son as a sacrifice for our sin. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us, who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. So it, it fulfilled the requirement of the law, this justification. Sin had to be paid for. Jesus paid for it. It's fully, fully taken care of. Um, so now we can follow the Spirit. What does it mean to have a life you know, where we follow the Spirit? It's that, that our attitude, our actions uh, are, are motivated, are guided, are directed, are prompted, are inspired by God living inside us. It says this, Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please God. So it's starting in our mind, right? What we think about affects our heart. What our heart becomes affects our actions. So it begins with a thought. Now, can we control what thoughts come into our mind? What things come across our, our, our consciousness? No. Uh, but we can keep it from becoming something that we focus on. I don't know if you've heard the saying before. You can't keep a bird from landing on your head, but you can sure keep it from building a nest, right? Right? You can't control certain things from popping in, but we can control how much we dwell on. That's what it's talking about, that, that we want the Holy Spirit to be what we're dwelling on in our, in our minds, good things, honorable things to God. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. That's why those who are still under control of their sinful nature can never please God. That, that doing good deeds, uh, that, that living under our, our sinful nature, that there's no way to get rid of that ourselves. There's no way to be good enough. We can never please God down that route. The only thing that we can do to please God is accept his forgiveness. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. And Christ lives within you, so even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. So this idea of salvation, salvation has arrived, yet it is still to come. That We've been forgiven of our sins, that the curse of, of uh, spiritual death, but we're still under the curse of physical death. That, that will ultimately be conquered when, when Jesus comes back. So we're in this, uh, once again, this picture of this 
um, in between time where we're saved, but God is still saving. Uh, we still experience physical death, but we are freed and we have been saved from a spiritual death. And eventually, though, it's, it's all, all death is going to be conquered. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. So this last passage here is, is talking about the evidence of God in our life. Uh, the fact that uh, the Holy Spirit living within us is a confirmation that we've accepted uh, the forgiveness that Christ has, has given us. That it, it, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is a, a sign uh, a, a, uh, not a sign in the sense of like a symbol, but a sign in the sense of, of evidence that God lives inside us. Remember in Galatians, Paul talks about this is the, the evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That God begins to work. That God begins to change us from the inside out. On our own, it's impossible, but with God working within us, it is possible. So we're going to continue this, this passage tomorrow. We're going to continue to kind of lay this out. Uh, but today, Paul just lays out this very important principle. There's no condemnation for those who belong to Christ. The Holy Spirit lives inside you as, as evidence that you are saved, but also to help you live under the control of, uh, of God and not of sin. It's still a struggle. It isn't like the Holy Spirit comes in and makes us a robot, um, but we have God's power helping us, guiding us, directing us. We want to be controlled by the Spirit. Think about things of the Spirit, not on our own selfish desires, not on our sinful desires, but focusing on God in this moment. All right, let's take some time and pray here as we start our Friday. Uh, Friday for our uh, prayer campaign is about finances. Financial Friday, <laughs> we've been praying for just the uh, the needs of the church, uh, praying for God's provision just in everything that He would have us do uh, from just normal operations of the church to, to ways that he wants us to grow and expand and reach our community, help people, uh, reach more people with the gospel, help some of our partners, all these types of things. Uh, we want to just pray for God's provision and uh, in all of that. So would you join me this morning? God, we come to you today and uh, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness to us. God, you are good, completely, wholly, perfectly good. God, when we think about good things, you, you far surpassed how our mind can even comprehend how good and perfect you are. So God, we, we start there today. We start reflecting on, on your goodness. And we know that that goodness is, is perfect in its care for us and the provision of us. God, in our daily needs as individuals, as families, and also as a church. So God, we, we come to you with uh, just the desire to see you at work in, in our finances. Um, God, I just think so many families right now just struggling financially, struggling with uh, inflation, struggling with, with maybe the loss of work. God, all of these, these other things that, that happen uh, just on a routine basis that, that cause uh, financial stress. God, medical uh, bills that, that come up. All these emergencies that come up. God, I pray for peace in, in personal finances. God, I pray for, for peace in our, in our church finances. God, you have given us exactly what we need. God, that you have brought people to, to our church, that you have you placed resources and gifts in their hands. And God, we just pray that we would be great stewards of, of everything that you've given to us to accomplish the mission that you've laid out before us. And we thank you so much just for uh, the way that you've always provided in the past. And God, we know that you will always continue to provide in the future. And we say that in, in faith, but we also say that as, as a comfort to ourselves, God, for those moments that we worry, for those moments that we get, get a little anxious, God, uh, we just reflect on Psalm 23, that you are our shepherd. We have everything that we need. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.